Hello there, I'm Mount Payne 27 and this is Dean of Doom, the show where we give grades to classic and contemporary Doom wads. Why? Because ranking things is fun. Today's episode will be dedicated to Ancient Aliens, a megawad released to significant public acclaim five days before Doom 2016 came out. It was primarily authored by Paul De Bruyne, whom you all know better as Skillsaw, and the soundtrack was composed entirely by Stuart Rin, aka Stewboy. The majority of Rin's compositions were bespoke for Ancient Aliens, which makes their high quality all the more impressive. Now I'm on the record of saying that Ev Eternity has the best music of any megawatt I've played, but I'll also go on record of saying that I think Ancient Aliens has the best Doom soundtrack by a single composer. Sorry, Bobby. Ancient Aliens is known for its vivid custom textures, conspiracy theory theme, and deep love for the color purple. You'll notice Skillsaw also made a handful of sound replacements, notably to the menu SFX, the sound of a switch being hit, some item pickup sounds, and the plasma rifle's firing sound. The Megawatt also features two custom monsters. I'll introduce them when we meet them. I'll be up front with you guys. You're in for a treat today. I wanted to make sure I got this one right before I released it, because this is a fan favorite, and one of the most highly regarded Megawads of all time. Now, before we dive in, here's how the show works. We give each level in the WAD two grades, one for quality and one for difficulty. We grade quality from A to F, and difficulty from X to E, X for extreme, E for easy, and A through D in between. A grade A level is fun, memorable, visually distinctive, creative, and a fair challenge. Lower grades indicate the level lacks some or all of these qualities. Bear in mind that I'm a mere doom mortal, and these reviews reflect only my opinions, so our definitions of difficulty and great map design will surely differ. Disagreeing is part of the fun, after all. At the end of the day, this show is really about spreading the joy of doom, so let's do so. For the new viewers in the audience, here are the rules. 1. We play on ultraviolence. 2. We play each level from a pistol start. 3. In order to review the wad, I must have played it at least twice. 4. Saves are allowed, but discouraged. And 5. I go for 100% kills in all levels, making exceptions in cases where it's just not worth it. I play on Z-Doom, with compatibility settings on strict. Now, to the wad. Map 1. The Ancient Navajo Wolf Warp. This seems too quiet. Oh well. Ooh, peyote! Don't mind if I do. And you're off! Ancient Navajo Wolf Warp may look menacing, what with the Cyber Demon and all, but don't panic. Grab the Berserk, the Megasphere, the Shotgun, and just let hell break loose. Your success is more or less guaranteed so long as you keep moving. The map is even kind enough to let you telefrag the Cyber Demon after you're done letting him mop the floor with all his friends. Succinct and fun, this is what all Megawatt openers should aspire to. Grade A-, difficulty D-. Map 2, Sanctum of the Wastes. If Map 1 was an introduction to Ancient Aliens' pace of play, Sanctum of the Wastes is an opening statement on the Megawad's texturing and architecture. It's unmistakably Doom, but the zany palette almost makes you think twice. Playing through these first few maps, I was almost put off by the hippie colors and the laid-back music initially, the atmosphere running so contrary to my expectations of what Doom should look and sound like, but that's exactly why it works. Remember this. Ancient Aliens is Doom in spirit, but an adventure game at heart. Getting back to the level, you'll notice that Sanctum of the Waste doesn't exactly take it easy on you. You'll meet the Revenant, whose homing rockets now gush smoke rather obnoxiously, and the new Mancubus, same as the old Mancubus. Well, except for the skin. That death animation is way more disturbing than the old one, don't you think? This map gets a B- with a difficulty of D+. Map 3, Arachnatron Arrival. Run, hide, or die, the spiders never stop. First time I played this map, my reaction was, oh come on, of course they do. I was right, there are only a dozen of them, but I burned all my ammo making a point and didn't enjoy the rest of the level much. As you can see, the Arachnitrons also got a reskin, and I think it looks great. If I were you, I'd practice punching out Revenants once you get Berserk, it builds character, and you're gonna be forced to do it later. I gotta say this map can get nasty. Traps are often compounded by the pesky arachnitrons who've always got you in their sights. Once again, Skillsaw is kind enough to let you telefrag the remaining spiders, this time with the help of your spirit bearer. Grade B, difficulty C. Map 4, Bad Medicine Men. It took me until just now, writing the script, but I finally got the joke. The archviles up in the towers are the Bad Medicine Men. Now I like this level even more. Bad Medicine Men sees ancient aliens starting to become more sophisticated combat-wise. Ammo is not exactly abundant, so you'll have to be bold with Berserk once again. You can forget about taking out these mancubi or sniping the archviles, as Skillsaw will provide you with much more elegant methods to dispatch them both. If you've played Sunlust, this MIDI will sound familiar because it's also the soundtrack to that wad's map 4. It's a snazzy little song called Desk Lamp. Map 1. 
but this is really where Ancient Aliens begins for me. Grade A-, difficulty C. Map 5. Last Refuge of the Anasazi, also known as the Cyberdemon's Revenge, because parked behind the first building is, you guessed it, the Cyberdemon from Map 1's brother. Luckily, he's a pea brain. If you run around like a madman, you can get him to kill the majority of the other monsters while you run your errands. Collect some keys, hit some buttons, and admire the scenery, especially Waterfall Valley and the Rocket Launcher Secret, although you want to not die first and sightsee later. Last Refuge of the Anasazi is a blast, and I think it's because of that roaming Cyberdemon. He exerts just enough pressure to keep you moving, but Skillsaw gives you enough cover and escape routes that you don't really have to confront him until you want to. In my mind, there's nothing better than a Doom level that's always pushing you forward. Grade A, difficulty B-. Map 6, Sinkhole Showdown. Sinkhole Showdown is as close to a gimmick level as you're going to get in this wad. As the title suggests, you'll be doing battle with a few rounds of monsters that emerge as the sinkhole deepens. It's a pretty straight fight, except for the archfiles, who could complicate things if you're minus a rocket launcher. I have to say, this map does prompt a few questions from me, like, how does grabbing a shotgun cause a sinkhole? Were those poor monsters really trapped underground all this time? Didn't you free them? If so, I think they really ought to be more grateful. My vote for nastiest fight in the wad so far goes to this yellow key trap. If you don't see this one coming, you are toast. I think of this map as Episode 1's intermission. Grade B, difficulty B-. Map 7, Dare to Fly Where Eagles Soar. These maps just keep getting better and better. Dare to Fly Where Eagles Soar is lush and exciting from start to finish. It's probably the level I think of first when I picture Episode 1. It might not be the best level in the episode, but it feels like Skillsaw really perfected his usage of the custom textures here. Maybe it's the verticality or the level's satisfying symmetry that complements his visual choices so well. Bottom line is he really nailed the look of this one. The combat is also outstanding, with my personal favorite room being the Baron Sandwich on Spider Bread with an Archvile Chaser. I can't get enough of these Spirit Animal Telefrag sequences, they're priceless. Although, of course, the true fans in the audience know Doomguy's Spirit Animal is actually the Super Shotgun. I love this level. Grade A, difficulty C+. Map 8, Ancient Aliens. There it is. The first UFO of the WAD. Conspiracy theorists everywhere rejoice. Airborne anomalies aside, the first half of this map feels a bit flat compared to what's come before. The encounters are too spread out, and it takes an awful lot of time before you feel like you're making progress. Map 8 is at its best when it's springing archfiles on you, which I know some people don't enjoy, but this map in particular needs the pick-me-up energy-wise. I will say I do enjoy the two UFO fights. This green maze full of specters and archfiles got me good the first time I played it. Nowadays, I don't go in there at all without a healthy clip of cells. The map finishes out on a strong arena fight, and I'll never get tired of saying this, but this wad is absolutely beautiful. Grade B, difficulty B-. Map 9, The Nectar Flow. The first guest map of Ancient Aliens comes courtesy of Speed of Doom co-author Josh Seeley, who gives the Megawatt its first true epic. Over 500 enemies await your swift and merciless judgment. Luckily, they're mostly softies. In fact, over 100 of them are just zombie men. Seeley almost rivals Skillsaw's ability to match adventure and adrenaline here. This is probably my second favorite guest map in the set for its ambitious scale, consistently entertaining fights, and handsome detailing, to say nothing of the help it gets from Stuart Wren in this understated but gorgeous MIDI number. This huge nectar tunnel is a great set piece. Wake up the cyber demon and all this other nonsense and let the fun begin. You shouldn't have to fire a shot until the time comes to decommission Mr. Cybe Cybe. I almost forgot about the spider mastermind archfile ambush at the end. That one had me panic for a second. And I'll tell you what, I can't think of many things more satisfying than letting off a fusillade of rockets into the faces of a dumb pile of demons. The nectar flow is a great reference and an even better map. Grade A, difficulty B+. Map 10. Gift of Denial. Gift of Denial is the culmination of your vision quest, a gorgeous overture of the episode's aesthetic themes that contain some of the most challenging and creative fights in the WAD so far. You can get a rocket launcher and a secret plasma right off the bat, which you're gonna need for the opening scrum. This terrace area with the crushers looks pretty unfriendly until you grab the yellow key, at which point it becomes much more unfriendly. Probably the standout fight of the level for me is the blue key room, where you're treated to a classic skill saw trap. You'll have to take out a hefty group of Hell Knights and Revenants while avoiding eye contact with a prowling archfile at the other end of the room which wouldn't be so bad if the floor didn't steadily rise to meet him. You've got about 45 seconds before you're on his level and you can start resurrecting stuff. It's a very dramatic fight, and one of my favorites in the Megawad. But you're not out of the woods yet. Your getaway UFO is guarded by shotgunners, mancubi, revenants, imps, and three cyberdemons. Talk about a difficulty spike, holy cow. Good thing the aliens left this BFG lying around. Even if you dislike this level, it's practically impossible not to respect it. Gift of Denial is a terrific episode ender, and certainly the toughest test that ancient aliens has thrown at you so far. From here, it's off to the stars. Grade A, difficulty A-. Map 11, On the Origin of Spaces. 
You'll notice the change of scenery immediately. Ancient Aliens trades dry heat and desert temples for a chilled out neon technoscape and fathomless deep space views in episode 2. You want a pun, Skillsaw? Two can play that game. You're going to have some close encounters of the painful kind with both of the WAD's custom monsters making their debut in this map. The stealth plasma aliens are quick and often travel in packs. They shoot pairs of plasma bolts and don't fully reveal themselves until they begin firing. On the bright side, they can be killed with a single shell. I mostly don't mind them. The alien guardians, on the other hand, can go to hell. Which is a joke I can make, since they're not actually demons. Anyway, they fly, they've got four skull faces, and they can pump revenant missiles at you in threes. To grab the key by the exit door, you'll have to take a ride to the moon, which is a clever nod to skill saws earlier wads Lunatic and Valiant. For its brevity and relative lack of excitement outside the custom monster introductions, this map gets a B- with a difficulty of C. Map 12, Magenta Heat. If Ancient Aliens has low points, this has got to be one of them. Which is to say this map is merely okay. With only the pump action shotgun on hand, this opening is a bit annoying to deal with since Skillsaw doesn't waste any time ladling on the custom monsters. This is about as generic an Ancient Aliens map as you're going to see. It's basically just a very purple tech-based level. But I do like this part where you can make the monsters go boom, and I must say this MIDI is fresh. Skillsaw is allowed to make levels that aren't perfect. Grade, C+, difficulty, C+. Map 13, Polychromatic Terrace. This is another level that I'm not in love with, not really sure what it is. It seems like there's more dead air in this map than is usual for ancient aliens. It's a relatively straightforward key hunt, but Polychromatic Terrace doesn't have much interest in funneling you forward so much as it patiently waits for you to find the right switch, elevator, etc. Despite its relatively open layout, I feel like I never have a whole lot of room to maneuver in this map. The combat is mostly centered around ambushes, which is fine, but none of them feel quite as exciting as the ones we saw on Earth, except this mosh pit vimps at the end, which is great fun. Like much of early episode 2, the spectacle and music act as crutches for the gameplay. Grade B-, difficulty C+. Map 14, Blazing Boulevard. Your trip through the alien's satellite metropolis continues with Blazing Boulevard, a much-needed fuel injection of a level that really loves its arch files out in the open. You've got lots of room to scramble, though plenty of heavy munitions, so don't hesitate to cut loose. Skillsaw is kind enough to give you a glimpse of what's coming through the floor here. Unfortunately, I still managed to screw this fight up several times. I don't really understand the point of this chain gunner ambush, since you get a partial invisibility right before it. I guess it softens you up for this spider mastermind and her army of imps, which itself is really just the appetizer to a main course of stealth aliens that can easily broil those with slow reaction times. I'll never get tired of these neon walkways suspended over space. And since I haven't said it yet, this episode has some of the most gorgeous skyboxes I've seen in Doom. Grade, B+, plus, difficulty, B. Map 15, Wormhole Junction. Welcome to the disco of death that is Wormhole Junction, a compact, colorful bloodbath set to one of Stuart Wren's grooviest tracks. This level feels perfectly situated, right in the middle of the episode and Megawad, giving off a sort of extraterrestrial Times Square vibe. Thankfully, it's not that crowded. You're gonna be up against it from the start here, since you're taking on essentially the whole of downtown Alienville at once. Luckily, the map is fully stocked with spheres of the Mega and Soul variety, and one in vulnerability, which I was too proud to look up and too dumb to find. The huge Hollywood fights at the beginning and end don't phase me as much as these arch files that appear when you grab the yellow key. They can really make your life miserable if you're low on rockets. Power-ups and all, Wormhole Junction is still one of the harder maps in the wild especially because there's really not as much ammo laying around as you think. As the map title implies, you can warp to the secret levels from here. Grade, B, difficulty, A-. Map 31, Grey Dwarf. The second guest map in the Megawad was made by its very talented composer, Stuart Wren. This will be the only time in this episode that I do not speak highly of his work, because Grey Dwarf is just not for me. The level takes place on an alien ship, which is about as opaquely designed as you'd expect an alien ship to be. The route to the exit is fairly direct, and you rarely encounter foes in great numbers, but there are 13 secrets, most of which I don't need and really don't enjoy finding. And a lot of monsters are tucked away in them, which drives me nuts, because I can never remember which secrets I've already visited, and I need 100% kills. The level is really, really grey, and compared to the rest of the wild, the combat just doesn't pop. Sadly, Grey Dwarf is also home to my least favorite MIDI in the game. All that said, a player who enjoys secret hunting more than I do will find something to like here. It comes down to this kind of map just not being my cup of tea. Sorry, Stu. Grade, C-, difficulty, C+. Map 32, Ossuarium Exoterrae. 
Not really sure what Skillsaw was thinking with this one. This alien charnel house is neither difficult nor distinctive enough to make it as a map 32, hardly showing signs of a pulse outside of one or two fights like this nasty trap by the yellow key with the sniping spiders, alien guardians, and hell knights blocking your escape. Perhaps this is a testament to how unified the rest of Ancient Aliens feels, but Asuarium Exoterra just doesn't seem like it belongs in this wad at all and not just because of the way it looks. As someone familiar with Skillsaw's other work, this feels to me like a retextured Valiant reject. It's not bad, but it plays like it came from a different development cycle. When I replay Ancient Aliens, I think I'll skip its secret maps from now on. Grade, C+, difficulty, B. Map 16, Leave Your Soul Behind. Ambitious, beautiful, and exciting, Leave Your Soul Behind features one of the most intrepid key hunts in Doom's history. Find an unguarded UFO in this alien space station and make the jump to light speed. Beam down to this ice planet to find the blue key and you can obtain the red key on a fiery planet. With both in hand, you can boot up your improbability drive and get ready to meet the alien homeworld. You'll be hard pressed to find a better adventure map in Ancient Aliens or anywhere, really. Skillsaw essentially gives you four full maps to explore, and unlike Map 32, the foreignness of these alien planets works to the level's advantage here. It's the finer touches that deepen the immersion like this starfield texture simulating space travel, and the fact that every planet you visit has a unique skybox. The only good thing about alien guardians I forgot to mention earlier is when they die, they blow up and do proximity damage, so you can sometimes take entire groups of them out in one shot, because when one explodes, he can kill his teammates in a chain reaction. Watch out for the final assault. It's a lot of hell knights, pinkies, and four cyber demons who are nothing against the power of spirit animal telefrags. This is Skillsaw at the peak of his powers. Leave your soul behind is astonishing work, and always a pleasure to play. Grade A+. Difficulty, B. Map 17, Daylight Under a Dark Soul. Get ready for a pronounced difficulty hike here as we're almost done with episode two. Daylight Under a Dark Soul makes somewhat more flippant use of cyber demons than the rest of the WAD so far, and you'll definitely be needing the help of the plasma gun to deal with all this nonsense. Skillsaw's use of archviles is par for the course, but I really detest these lost souls who love to block you in the final area where you're up against two cyber demons with limited cell ammo. Yes, I know you can find the BFG in this pit, but I was just uh, trying to challenge myself. Yeah, I think they'll buy that. The stealth alien archfile ambush by the exit door adds insult to injury and concludes the map on a rather sour note. This map isn't bad, just a little darker and meaner than usual. Grade, B minus, difficulty, A minus. Map 18, Illuminati Revealed. This pattern is irrefutable proof of ancient art. An icon of sin level at map 18, now that's a surprise. Almost as surprising as the Illuminati being involved with the aliens all along. Don't waste any time standing open mouth because the Illuminati pyramid will spawn monsters continuously. This is one of those times where I don't care about my kill percentage because I have a feeling the map is meant to be more of an experience than a competitive arena anyway. And what an experience it is. The sights here will blow you away, and the entire level is a fight for your life. In my opinion, it's easily the hardest of the wads so far. The incomparable Stuart Rin comes up big here yet again, gracing the episode 2 finale with a midi that's equally freewheeling, whimsical, and epic. <laughs> Illuminati Revealed is a great finale if you're not playing under Dean of Doom rules, so I didn't. Grade, A-. minus. Difficulty, A. Map 19, Crash Landing. Remember when I said you'd want to practice punching out Revenants back in Map 3? Well, hope you're ready, because Doom Guy crashed his UFO and lost all his guns. If you've got reservations about punching things that aren't pinkies and imps, then you'd better lose them. That said, this map's hardest fight forces you to punch your way out of these fodder demons without getting blasted by the archfile across the way, and then of course a revenant rolls in. Since Skillsaw's a nice guy, you can telefrag the archie when you're done. Like at the end of Vanguard's Tyson map, you will get a shotgun, but you better save your shells for the alien guardians, because punching them is about as smart as punching an exploding barrel. Crash landing is pretty fair and well calibrated. Grade, B, difficulty, C. Map 20, Code. Skillsaw gave half the maps in Episode 3 to some high-profile guest authors. The first of these maps is Code, a wicked little level by Braden Hart, whose style is actually pretty aligned with Skillsaw's. You can see it in his use of archfile traps. This one's especially creative. You see the archfile holograms? If you blow up the barrels beneath them, archfiles show up. I mean, we're gonna have to kill them anyway, so what the hell. There's another archfile fight later that I also really like. Lower these skull blocks and hit the switch in the middle to get some goodies, then pre-fire some rockets at the teleporters in front of you, because the archfiles are on their way. If you don't know this is coming, your goose is cooked. Code isn't quite as eye-popping as the rest of the Megawatt, but the combat is clever and consistently engaging. Grade B, difficulty B. Map 21, Cyberbullying Beyond Earth. I think if I had to pick a least favorite skill saw map in Ancient Aliens, it would be this one. Cyberbullying has two things going for it. The cute title, which is in reference to the cyberdemon bullying you, and not the other way around, by the way, and these random tetrahedrons. 
I like them. This is the most fillerish map since Magenta Heat, except the fights are all either too bland or really annoying, especially this part, which has way too many stealth aliens, and the ending, with the Mancubi, Hell Knights, Crushers, and the titular Bully. I appreciate that it's something different, but I wish it was more enjoyable. You've really got to lean on infighting and the Crushers to thin the herd, since you don't even get a plasma rifle on this level. Aesthetically, it's kind of a sloppy hybrid of Episode 1 and 2, and I don't know what to call it. A temple? A tech base? Abstraction? This one I have to give a C. Difficulty of B. Map 22, Acerola Orion. Acerola Orion is a scenic and hugely impressive guest spot from the brilliant mind behind Back to Saturn X, SL Forsham. Her design choices definitely harken back to that epic project. I'm thinking of the devious arch file placements, the careful balance of open spaces and angular hallways, the obscure secrets, that feeling of every fight being extremely optimized, and of course, the rigorous attention to detail and creative texture variety. I'm not sure if Stewboy did this intentionally, but the MIDI even kind of sounds like BTSX's opening track, doesn't it? It's a great song in its own right, but I hope the reference is intentional. I'd say this map is quite a bit tougher than you might expect, owing to the monster's often advantageous positioning and a few sections where the limited footing will bite you in the rear. It's not a map I look forward to exactly, but as a visual spectacle it's an unqualified triumph, and SL Forsham's hard work is apparent and much appreciated. Grade A-, difficulty A-. Map 23, Trinary Temple. The only other pinchy map I've played is TNT Revolution's Super Weapon Facility, a huge map that I love mostly because it's strange. Trinary Temple is also strange and fucking huge. Like all maps of this size and scope, it has a tendency to drag and nuke your frame rate. However, as an adventure map, it fits right into the megawatt and provides a nice buffer between the aggression of Acerola Orion and the next few maps. I do really like the temple portion of the level, it's mysterious and much more handsome than the outdoor area, which I usually point to as the worst looking part of Ancient Aliens. It just doesn't manage to make the blue and orange work. Also, the combat is really inconsistent. All the running and gunning outside would be fun if not for all the random BS hit scanners teleporting in. Most of the map's arch files are ineffectual, which is weird. And you've got fun mob fights and not so fun mob fights, like the one in the final room, which features probably my least favorite usage of the alien guardians and two annoying cyber demons. There's a lot to talk about with this map. I haven't even mentioned the streams that use conveyor belts to simulate water flow or the world's most useless specter. But we've got to move on because this map is more of a peculiarity than a highlight. Grade B minus. Difficulty, B+. Now before I start the next one, I'm going to include a spoiler warning. This next map is worth playing before you watch me review it, so here's the timestamp to jump ahead if you wish. Map 24, Culture Shock. Words aren't really going to do this one justice, but maybe music can. You don't need me to say it, but Culture Shock is a work of ecstatic beauty. Probably the most famous map from this set, for good reason. Guest mapper Lupinx Castman is not the combat expert that Skillsaw is, but this is far and away the best looking map in one of the best looking megawads I've ever played. It also contains probably the best secret in the wad, which comes completely out of the blue and kind of creeped me out the first time I found it. If someone in the comments knows who this guy in the cage is, or if it's a reference or something, I'd appreciate your insight. Either way, let him out and he'll give you a BFG, which you'll need for the Cyber Demon at the end. This fight with the Imps, Binkies, Archies, and Mancubi is my favorite in the level, probably because it reminds me of something I'd see in Eternity. This map is a treasure. Grade A+, difficulty B+. Map 25, Xeno Arboreum. Skillsaw took up the unenviable task of following Culture Shock and delivered a perfect strike with Xeno Arboreum, a haunting, beautiful map with some electric fights and killer atmosphere. The level takes its name from this forest of big spinning test tubes full of demons, I mean aliens. These alien trees, combined with the see-through floor, chilly music, and twilight skybox have a really uncanny effect on me and I love it. From here on out, you'll also notice more and more Episode 1 textures making a return, which makes sense if you remember that the alien temples on Earth must have been modeled in the architecture from their home planet. Skillsaw throws his standard amount of arch files at you and really piles on the stealth aliens, but I find that the optional fights are the most enjoyable ones here, especially this cyber encounter after which you can grab a secret megasphere. I didn't think much of Xeno Arboreum after my first time playing it, but it's grown on me more than any other level in Ancient Aliens. Grade A, 
difficulty B+. Map 26, Egyptian Metaphysics. This guest map by Tarnsman goes whole hog with the ancient temple theme and the hit scanners. Holy crap, is this a hectic start. I wouldn't want to try this without a partial invisibility, that's for sure. If not for the increased difficulty, this map would have felt totally at home in episode 1, but as I said last map, I appreciate the architecture slowly coming full circle. Two fights in this level will definitely wreck you if you're not ready, but can be mostly prepared for. This waiting pool area with the plasma gun is a terrible cocktail of flying enemies and stealth aliens. Get some distance and hold down the fire button or you're done for. And this alien mothership with four archfiles and their friends can get unpleasant if you didn't find the BFG. Tarnsman has a very skill saw esque handle on things. Egyptian Metaphysics is a fine map. Grade B, difficulty B. Map 27 Kingdom of the Crystal Skulls. Alternative title UFO Parking Lot count at least nine on this level. Kingdom of the Crystal Skull's visuals are its strongest suit. Skillsaw blends elements from all three episodes more deftly than his guest mappers can, all while adding neat little details like these stone columns levitating in space. The combat feels a little detoothed, more on par with episode one really, excepting this great plasma shootout. Side note, gotta love getting the jump on stealth aliens. Find all three keys and the Crystal Skulls will reveal themselves and your way forward. Grade B, difficulty C+. Map 28, Floating Arena. Floating Arena is an absolute war zone. Brought to you by the same guy who did the Nectar Flow way back in Episode 1, this level is chaotic, but not quite sadistic. Sealy never deprives you of supplies and offers you plenty of real estate to run around. Your biggest problem will be dealing with the level's 30 archfiles, which have a habit of picking you off from afar, especially at the start. I'll never forget this little containment area that sets you up against about 10 of them at once. You'll be getting zapped so much that it's pretty hard to see and even harder to aim straight. Outside of that encounter and this weird, unnecessary platforming section, most of the map consists of surviving huge waves of enemies that fill up the central area. The last fight is pretty intimidating, and probably one of the hardest in the WAD. It's an army of revenants, two spider masterminds, a few cyber demons, cacodemons, macubi, and those damn stealth aliens. Eliminating this archfile cluster is a roll of the dice, and it's easier than you think to catch a cyber demon rocket, because they're rarely even aiming at you. Floating arena is liable to splatter you on first playthrough, so consider yourself warned. Grade B, difficulty A. Map 29, the ones behind it all. From here on out, it's nothing but spoilers, so continue at your own risk. The Ones Behind It All is the last real level of Ancient Aliens, though in reality it's just three giant fights and a shocking revelation. The UAC, the Illuminati, and the aliens were in cahoots all along. The demons, the aliens, the pyramids, the peyote, it was all connected. I can tell that Skillsaw took great pains to make these last three fights exciting, but nothing can beat the part where you hit a switch and the walls come down to reveal all these white lab coats. I know they're just things, not NPCs, but seeing the UAC scientists in their little conference room, doing surveillance on Doomguy, testing the effects of a chainsaw on a Gakademon, and whatever the hell else is going on here, it just puts a smile on my face every time. All you've got left to do is survive this slaughter fest and you're home free. Hitch a ride home on a UFO and it's game over. Almost. Grade A, difficulty A-. Map 30, The End. The End is just the credits map. That's all. Just relax. Have a drink. Nothing to see behind this waterfall. Oh no. Not again. No, don't hit that teleporter! The great thing about the ancient alien theory is the fact that we can compare modern achievements with stories from our ancient past. And so, if today we're able to create a two-headed dog with six legs, is it possible that a similar creature existed thousands of years ago? And I say yes. Wait, we're back here? Jeez. Bad trip, I guess. Grade classified. Difficulty classified. I've already said too much. So, off the record, Ancient Aliens is just extraordinary. I'd be a madman to offer any kind of critique in my final comments because the takeaway is that if you're a fan of Doom, you need to play this at least once in your life. The amount of unbridled creativity here is inexpressible, and I want to personally thank Stewboy, Joshi, SL Forsham, Tarnsman, Pinchy, AD79, Lupinx Castman, and especially Skillsaw for taking the time to create this genuine work of art. Thank you all for loving what you do and for sharing it with us. For a final grade, I will happily give Ancient Aliens an A+. Difficulty-wise, even on Ultraviolence, this megawatt is pretty accessible, even for folks who haven't played a lot of Modern Doom. That said, it's probably tougher than Plutonia, so I'll give it a B, approaching B+, on days when I'm feeling out of it. Now, for my Dean's List. Valedictorian is a tie. 
It's map 16 and map 24. Leave your soul behind and culture shock. Just couldn't pick. Salutatorian? Map 10, Gift of Denial, which really is a proxy for the entire first episode, which is my favorite. Class President, Map 28, Floating Arena, and the dunce cap goes to Map 31, Grey Dwarf. Again, sorry, Stu. Ancient Aliens definitely also deserves the honor roll, which includes Map 1, the Ancient Navajo Wolf Warp, Map 4, Bad Medicine Men, Map 5, the Last Refuge of the Anasazi, Map 7, Dare to Fly Where Eagles Soar, Map 9, the Nectar Flow, Map 18, Illuminati Revealed, Map 22, Acerola Orion, Map 25, Xeno Arboreum, and Map 29, The Ones Behind It All. One last thing, I encourage everyone who loves this WAD's music as much as I do to check out Stuart Rin's Bandcamp page and buy the OST. I know that he and the rest of the Doom community don't do what they do for money, but I think he deserves the support, and he has my undying respect. Thank you all very much for watching, and please feel free to share your thoughts on the WAD in the comments. I'd love to hear what you think. This is Mount Payne 27 and I'll see you again in the next episode of Dean of Doom.